SNV Your TV. to you all ladies and gentlemen and welcome to join me Henry Wana at the anchor in Douala with a complete English newscast on Spectrum Television. Coming up, members of the special platform to manage autos rights in Cameroon have been installed into their functions this Monday, August 7, but not without criticism from disgruntled artists. Plus, government emissaries sent to Europe to preach about effort made by the state to solve the Anglophone crisis had a tough time over the weekend. Were they able to convince Cameroonians living in the diaspora at the end of the day? Find out in this newscast. Once more, ladies and gentlemen, you're all welcome. Let's kick start this newscast from Yaoundé, whereby members of the special platform to manage autos rights in the country have been installed into their functions this Monday, August 7, by the Minister of Arts and Culture, Professor Narcisse Mwekombi, with the hope of putting an end to this long-standing problem that has been facing Cameroonian artists. Larinette Apaje reports. The special platform for the collective management of autos rights in Cameroon whose members have been commissioned this August 7th, has been portrayed as the best means to find solutions to the overdue problems of artists if the 30-man team headed by Magistrate Marie-Louise Abomo works with transparency, rigor, and discipline. Uh, I have to be very fair. Yeah. They need to, to dialogue with everybody, even those who are in or out. Yeah. They have to do their best that uh, at the end of their job, they succeed in the meeting. Yeah. So, and I think... Uh, we cannot do the future if we are always fighting. Et vous allez voir que ce n'est que les gars de Douala qui sont dans cette histoire. Oh, moi, les Kodo, Romeo Dika, ou oh, Marco Mbela, les Bamileke, les Betty, les tout ce monde, nous, on ne fait pas la musique. While these artists are clinging to Narcisse Mouel et Combi's idea of creating a new structure that will manage autos rights in the country, one of the vice presidents of the special platform, Ate Bazo, boycotts the installation ceremony, joins other artists at the prime ministry to decry steps leading to the creation of a new organization. A new organization means liquidation and God knows what that means for us and what it will do in this country. CMC has about 2 billion 600 million francs CFA and it might go to waste. The recent struggles of members of the music family has been considered as the last opportunity to resolve all squabbles through dialogue. It's shameful to see that some of our popular artists in Cameroon, they're still over the year, more than 30 years, fighting, insulting, going to the media to disgrace, disgrace other people. I think that's not what we're supposed to do. We are yet we, artists and models, and I believe today I'm giving another chance now that I'm not, I'm not running for anything. The end of the problems concerning autos' rights in Cameroon is still to be a reality. The Cameroon music industry has faced many challenges, but a solution seems far-fetched. From Amatutu Muna to Nasis Mwele Kumbi at the Ministry of Art and Culture, authors still decry the mismanagement of their money. Veronica J. prompts into this problem and our reports. It all begins in 2005 when the existing authors' rights body, Sosinada National Civil Rights Society, was dissolved. A permanent commission for mediation and control of collective management organizations for copyrights and neighboring rights put in place began receiving criticisms for mismanagement of funds. Tired of all the noise, the head of state, Paul Bia, decided to end quarrels by creating the Cameroon Music Corporation, CMC, having as chairman Manu Dibango. The renowned saxophonist management was highly criticized by his peers. Reactions which Manu Dibango did not appreciate, giving way to Sam Bende during the April 2005 elective General Assembly. To make matters worse, Ama Tutumuna, heading the Arts and Culture Ministry at the time, annulled all resolutions of the April elective General Assembly withdrawing authorization giving the right to the collective management of the copyright of the musical domain to CMC. She put up her own institution, Cameroonian Civil Society, SOCAM, in June 2008 
having as leader Odile Ngaska. The ministerial authors' rights body has since then been contested by the Sambende CMC Bureau on grounds that it is still valid. Sambende took the case to the Supreme Court and in 2011, Amatutumuna's CMC annulment was revoked, giving victory to the Cameroon Music Corporation. A decision passed at a time when Prime Minister Philemon Yang had issued a decree establishing a committee to monitor the standardization of copyright management in Cameroon. To Minister Amatutumuna, the pill was too bitter to swallow. She left her illegally created Sokam and moved to Bui in the northwest region of Cameroon where she established Sokasim. She was taken off the ministry, leaving three different copyright bodies in Cameroon. Two years after the departure of Amatutumuna, CMC and Sokam, on a fateful day, decided to merge and create a new copyright body in the country. An agreement which the new Minister of Arts and Culture, Narcisse Mwele Kombi, rejected issuing a communique in July 2017, saying all steps undertaken were null and void, as the fusion did not engulf every artist. He equally fears any further conflict resulting from this new coalition. Mwele Kombi then convened a general assembly to create a new author's rights institution in Cameroon. Is the new bureau a solution to the unending author's rights crisis in Cameroon? What fate for Sokasim, Sokam and CMC? Let's wait and see. Let's leave court and talk politics at this point of the newscast whereby the executive committee of the Social Democratic Front, SDF, has reaffirmed the hold of their national convention come October 2017 and also called for school resumptions in the two English part of the Republic. The two points were highlighted over the weekend during an extraordinary meeting of the party that took place in Bamenda. From Bamenda, Bertin Gwe now reports. Expectations were high as the national chairman of the Social Democratic Front Party in the two Anglophone... We apologize for that technical problem, but then let's continue this newscast whereby some members of government were embarrassed last weekend while on a mission to explain to Cameroonians in the diaspora government's approach to solve the Anglophone crisis. In Brussels, Loran Esso was swamped by angry protesters, while in South Africa, Dion Guti was bundled out of a meeting that took place at the Cameroon Embassy. Details with you, Mumamanda. <laughs> The whole place surrounded by police. Not exactly the outcome government had hoped for when it dispatched delegations on a face saving mission with the country's diaspora. The ugly twist of events was splattered all over social media, live as every disagreeable moment was documented and shared. By far, the most talked about, the Brussels encounter, or lack of, with Justice Minister Laurent Esso, outvoiced by a group of angry Anglophone activists. The uninvited guests stormed the meeting venue with placards denouncing the present situation of some Anglophones in Cameroon in the wake of the current crisis. Chanting freedom songs, they demanded that those arrested in relation to the quandary be released. An initially quiet meeting turned into an open hearing which was quenched just in time by the Belgian police. The violence which was avoided in Belgium could not unfortunately be stalled in South Africa where the Minister Delegate at the Ministry of External Relations in charge of relations with the Commonwealth, Dion Goute, was forced out of the meeting at Cameroon's embassy. Like the other delegations, the Minister's assignment was to woo Cameroonians in South Africa into accepting government's approach to the crisis, mission which flopped as chaos took over. Angry protesters who were barred from entering the embassy grounds forced themselves in, bringing down the gates and wrecking everything in their way. The demands remained the same, free Anglophones incarcerated. Outside the aborted missions of August 5, the Gugumo Ngolengole team recorded relative success in the U.S., even though some attendees insist the duo failed to convince the audience. Though little has been said of the meetings in France and the UK, the general feeling of hostility permeates the diaspora community. Perhaps, as many have already cited, government should consider a different approach to the problem. 
The Deputy Chief of Political and Economic Affairs of the U.S. Embassy in Cameroon, Darren Smith, and the Executive Media Assistant, Michael Smith, have both come to the end of their three-year diplomatic mission to Cameroon. On behalf of the Head of State, Minister Louis Pomotaze of Economy, Planning and Regional Development, decorated the two diplomats with the Knight of the Order of Valor. This is with you, Larinetta Page. For facilitating the development of Cameroon through conceived projects in the health, transport, energy and security sectors under the banner of the U.S. Embassy in Cameroon, Mihaela Smith and Darren Smith have been honored this Monday with the Knight of the Order of Valor at the end of their three-year diplomatic mission to Cameroon. This medal symbolizes on the outside what I feel on the inside. Respect commitment and affection for the Cameroonian people. In 2014, about 200 billion francs CFA direct foreign investment was made by the United States of America in Cameroon and actually their investment is estimated at 1,380 billion francs CFA with most of the projects piloted by Mr. Smith. We are facing an economic crisis in our sub-region and uh, every time people used to say that one of the solution is uh, diversification you can say diversification in partnership and when you have a big partner as the United States of, Cam of America who is doing a lot of things for us we have to say thank you Mihaela Smith was amongst the first reporters who exposed the gravity of Boko Haram activities in Cameroon to the world, which explains why President Paul B has given instructions that she be honored as she leaves the country. Um, it's not just a thank you, but it's also uh, the significance, the symbol of, of the fact that our work here is not ended. It just started. We're going to go to our next mission uh, in another country, but our connection, our uh, uh, connection with Cameroon will continue. We will continue to work and to push for the projects we started here. This is our dedication to the country of Cameroon. Through this medal awards ceremony, it is hoped that the 60 years relationship between Cameroon and the United States of America will be more fruitful. Michael Stephen Hosa, after close to three years as U.S. Ambassador to Cameroon, has come to the end of his mandate. He is leaving Cameroon at a time when the United States has taken concrete engagement to support Cameroon in the fight against Boko Haram. Peter Sose in the upcoming report now examines the military cooperation between Cameroon and the U.S. as far as the war against the terror group is concerned. His report. As a key partner in Cameroon's fight against Boko Haram, the United States has always strengthened its commitment to peace, security and stability in the country by continuing to provide multifaceted military assistance. The State and Defense Departments of the U.S. have been coordinating financial material as well as intelligence support to beef up the capacity of the Cameroon Army. The U.S. has donated millions of U.S. dollars to Cameroon as aid to the anti-terrorism effort with a 7 million U.S. dollars reward on the head of Abubakar Shikau still up for grabs. The Ministry of External Relations indicates that America provides 2 percent of aid received from international bodies as far as military cooperation is concerned. In a firm and robust effort to boost the logistics pipeline of this aid, the U.S. government is providing Cameroon's elite force, the B, with large numbers of individual body armor sets consisting of Kevlar helmets and bulletproof vests, affording them the same protection level as U.S. boots in Afghanistan. This has immensely saved the lives of soldiers who would have incurred serious injuries or died on the battlefield. U.S. armored vehicles, given on numerous occasions, have also enhanced the capacity of Cameroon's army on the field. The deployment of 300 U.S. boots by former U.S. President Barack Obama in 2015 has increased the tempo and intensity of trading programs on counter-piracy, use of improvised explosive devices, and intelligence sharing. Cameroonian soldiers since 2016 have made use of facilities at the African drone base to fine-tune their skills on surveillance using drones. U.S. government and military authorities have also paid working visits to the country. These visits have provided opportunities where Cameroonian authorities evaluate whether U.S. support has been responsive to their demands. To ensure that U.S. military support to Cameroon is not misused to promote rights violations, the Pentagon recently ordered an inquiry on American boats 
who were recently slammed by Amnesty International for making their base a torture camp for Cameroonian soldiers violate human rights of Boko Haram suspects. Outgoing U.S. Ambassador Michael Steven Hosa has played a significant role in seeing to it that America remains a strong ally to Cameroon in the fight against Boko Haram. And Cameroonian authorities hope that Peter Henry Ballerin, the incoming ambassador, will continue in the same vein. Let's now pick up this story in brief, whereby a test flight by the Cameroon Airlines Corporation, Ameko, from Douala, Yaoundé, and thereafter to Beto has been successful this morning, August 7. It is in line with the vision of the corporation to increase domestic flights in the country after Bafusam, Garwa, Ngaoundéri, Marwa, Douala, Yaoundé, Bamenda, and now Betwa. Betwa will officially go operational in the days and weeks ahead. Still in brief, a landslide that occurred over the weekend in the Sancho West region of the country has left two persons dead, two missing and two injured. Authorities of that part of the republic have called for calm as investigations have been opened. Let's not get the inhabitants as well as the senior divisional officer for the Menua react just after the tragic incident. For close to 24 years, we've never seen such a calamity. Initially, the riverbed had about two or three meters. But today, you yourself, you found it. The riverbed has about 15 to 30 meters large. It would appear all started from Bebom, 12 kilometers away from here. On the summit of these mountains, you see where there was a landslide. We don't know what pro provoke the volume of water. We have done all, all this catastrophe around here. We can't bear it. It is difficult. More than 100 farmers have lost their farms. A traditional chiefdom has been destroyed. We close to several rooms, eight toilets, with all what they composed, plus a pigry. Three, four people were missing. Thank God a lot. Two have been met, who have been seen so far. Two are still missing. Despite intervention of the fire, brigade fighters who have come from Kansamba. This village has never witnessed such a thing. After we were informed about this uh, incident, we decided to go into the field first of all to encourage the population and also to take some security and preventive measures. So far uh, we just, uh, I just held a meeting after putting in place this uh, local crisis committee at the level of Sancho which uh, the principal mission is to continue the search of uh, these uh, two children whom up to now we have not been able to discover their whereabouts. Are they dead? Are they still alive? This uh, the team which is working close in collaboration in the field with uh, the, the rescue unit of the military. The next thing is to secure the area and also to reset to those victims and as well follow up the the two victims at the level of the hospital, which I, I will, I'm very pleased to say that their situation is not in danger. Their situation has been stabilized and uh, they are away from the danger zone. Confiance Bune, Senior Divisional Officer for the Inwa Talking Day. Let's now talk health, whereby today, August 7, marks the end of the National Breastfeeding Week. Uh, in this newscast, we look at uh, winning, which is the gradual process of, bre of breaking the child's breastfeeding habit. For better explanations about this process, here comes Darlene Fay. After breastfeeding the baby exclusively for the first six months of life, as recommended by the World Health Organization, nursing mothers are encouraged to introduce safe and complementary foods in addition to the milk. This till the baby is two years old. There is no link between sexual intercourse and the quality of milk. Experience has proven that even a pregnant woman can continue breastfeeding her child without any danger. Breast milk, medics insist, is and remains the best nutrient for every newborn. Aside from its health advantages, breast milk is economical and reinforces the bond between mother and child. Contrary to what many believe, sexual intercourse during breastfeeding has no negative impact on the child's health. Once the child is six months old, slowly introduce elements 
like pap. And when she's used to that, give her baby weight. It is, however, advised that before weaning the infant from breast milk, the mother should understand the feeding needs of her child to avoid any health complication. Let's now talk sports, whereby following a recent press conference by the government of Cameroon, citing the Douala Reunification Stadium as a host site for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations, we sought to find out how much work still needs to be done on the roads leading to the stadium. A man of that beat was Philemon Bale. Less than 24 months to the expected kickoff of the 2019 edition of the Africa Cup of Nations, the dust is yet to settle on where Cameroon will host the continental showpiece, following controversial alterations by CAF's president over the weekend as to the readiness of Cameroon to host a 2014 tournament with took keen interest on the city of Douala, one of the proposed cities to host the competition. Being Cameroon's economic capital, one of the most popular cities, Douala has had to deal with urban disorders for decades. Here we are at the main entrance to the Reunification Stadium, a site to host games during the Africa Cup of Nations. This scenario epitomizes the generalities of waste disposals in the city of Douala. The roads, which are at least over 40 years old, appear smaller and congested potholes are almost every dozen meters. Circulation into and around the stadium has to see a complete facelift. Other side activities around the stadium are to be cleared, while a lot of civic education is to be propagated prior, during, and even after the competition. The stadium proper will need an over 70% renovation work, the irrigation and lighting system, just to name a few. In a cat and mouse game between the government of Cameroon and the Confederation of African Football, a clear demarcation is not discernible as to whether the hosting rights will be revoked or maintained. Still in sport, the Intermediate Lions of Cameroon have had a first training session earlier today at the Douala Reunification Stadium. After three weeks of training in Yaoundé, the team will spend the next days in Douala to finalize preparations ahead of the Shan 2018 qualifiers against Sao Tome this Saturday. 22 players, that is two goalkeepers and 20 players trained under the supervision of team head coach Rigo Besson. The team is expected to play a friendly game against Union of Douala before leaving the country. A press confer conference has been announced for this Wednesday, August 9. Fuso Fabris of Edings Podolale came left today's training with a knee injury while Mbem Leopold and Mundongo are still expected to join the team in Douala. Let's now have a listen uh, to Anya Derrick, our team goalkeeper Anya Derrick, as well as Etabawak. So just give us a no, the preparation has been going on well and we are in the last week of the preparation so we have to give all we can so that we prepare for the, match, the upcoming match on Saturday and we think we are ready for the game. I'm concerned the, the way we have been preparing since last, um, last three weeks so um, I think um, we, are, we are ready to, to play against um, Sao Tome. Talk talking there just how prepared they are proud to the game against South Tome this weekend. It's still in sport. Kotospor of Garwa has confirmed her supremacy in the ongoing Elite One Championship in Cameroon, lashing Ras in the Bafusam. Four goals to nothing in a D25 encounter. In other result, we had uh, Union of Douala that defeated Canon of Yaoundi. One goal to nothing. UMS of Loom trashed Astro of Douala. One goal to nothing. Young Sport Academy and Star Renat separated on a virgin tie. Leon Blessé defeated Fetcher Football Club by two goals to nothing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is here that we place a cap on today's English newscast on Spectrum Television. See you tomorrow, God willing, and bye-bye. Your TV.